All right, sometimes when you're dealing with thermochemical equations, you might not know the delta H of your reaction. So how, there are different ways you can go about getting the delta H of the reaction. You can actually do the reaction itself and use a calorimeter and, and figure out the delta H. Um, or that you can actually use other reactions that might add up to your particular reaction. And what does that mean? Okay. Um, there's this law called Hess's Law. Hess's Law states that it is possible to add two or more thermochemical equations to produce a final equation for a reaction and the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual reactions is, is the enthalpy change for the final reaction. Now this is definitely a mouthful. It's much easier to explain if you actually do it. So let's actually go over here and let's say I have this reaction. Um, sulfur plus oxygen gas yields me sulfur trioxide and I have no idea what the delta H is. Okay. Well, there are many, many, many reference books that tell you what the delta H is for other reactions, but this one, for some reason, I couldn't find, or my reference book didn't have it, or I didn't want to do the particular reaction in the lab, or something along those lines. So how can I find this? Well, Hess's Law says that I can manipulate these reactions in order to get this overall reaction, and that way I can figure out my delta H if I add up the two the H's. So first, I have to make sure that I have um, the, the, these, these reactions a actually do add up to the final reaction. So let's look at this first thing. I need two sulfurs on my, reactant, on my reactant side. Well, here's sulfur, but I only have one. So I'm going to multiply this whole reaction by two so I can get two sulfurs on my reactant side. So I'm going to multiply this by two. Um, so that makes two sulfur plus two oxygen gases yields me two sulfur dioxides. And because I multiplied the reaction by two, this also must be multiplied by two. Because this, this negative 297 kilojoules is telling me how much energy is going to be released for one mole of sulfur, but I'm now doing two moles of sulfur, so I'm going to multiply this by two. So my delta H is now going to be, um, what is it, negative 594 kilojoules. Okay, great. So now I have my two moles of sulfur on my reactant side. That's awesome. But now I have sulfur dioxide on my product side, and I don't want it. I want sulfur trioxide. So I'm going to look at this reaction here. Well, here's sulfur dioxide uh, on the product side and sulfur trioxide on the reactant side. So I actually want to flip those around, so I'm going to do the reverse reaction. So I'm going to say oxygen gas, I'm going to make sure I note that, oxygen gas plus um, two moles of sulfur dioxide gas is going to give me two moles of sulfur trioxide gas. Okay, and because I flipped it, this going this forward direction is going to be an endothermic reaction, but if I reverse it, I'm going to, it's going to be coming an exothermic reaction, so this is going to be negative. So my delta H is going to be negative 198 kilojoules. Okay, so let's make sure this works. So if I were to add these two reactions together, um, I note that I have two moles of sulfur dioxide here and two moles of sulfur dioxide here. I can cross those out because this is a product and this is a reactant so I can just cross those out. Okay, um, and now if I add everything up, I can't, nothing else crosses out, so I'm going to add everything up. So I have two moles of sulfur, solid, plus two moles of oxygen, this should be oxygen too, sorry, O2 gas, plus another mole of O2 gas, yields two moles of SO3 gas. Okay, so what if I add these together, 2 plus 1 is 3, so I can say 3 moles of oxygen gas. So 2 sulfur atoms are mole, 2 moles of sulfur plus 3 moles of oxygen yields 2 moles of sulfur trioxide, which is exactly what my original equation is. So yes, I did this properly. I can check it off. And so I want to find my delta H. I'm just going to add these guys up. So negative 594 plus negative 198 is going to give me negative 792. at negative 792 kilojoules. So that actually, now I could know that this is negative 792 kilojoules because Hess's Law says that I can do this. Okay, <clears throat> so this is basically Hess's Law in a nutshell. You might have several different reactions you're going to have to manipulate, but actually, once you get the hang of it, it's actually kind of fun and pretty easy. Um, but I'm also going to do one last thing. Um, this is a reaction. It is a formation reaction, meaning we're taking, we're forming sulfur trioxide from its elements. So in order to do formation reactions, the best way is we want to get this to be one mole. Um, so I'm going to divide the whole thing by two, because I don't like, uh, in formation reactions, if you want to learn more about them, I'm, there's a video on that as well. But uh, formation reactions have one mole of the product, so we're dividing everything by um, two, which ends up with sulfur solid plus three halves 
oxygen gas yields sulfur trioxide gas. And then my delta H is also going to be divided by 2, oops, which is going to be negative 396 kilojoules. And we can actually say kilojoules per mole because we have one mole of this. So this is our formation reaction. And notice, this is a fraction in it, but in formation reactions, it's totally okay. We are allowed to have fractional coefficients in our, in our um, formation reactions because our main, our main important thing is that we have one mole of product. So this is Hess's law in action, and then we put a little bit of formation, uh, delta H of formation in there as well. So um, Hess's law is really, really useful when dealing with reactions where you do not know our delta H's and we need to find it pretty easily.